Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Garlic Bread Chili Dogs. One of the things that I love to do on this channel is take two foods that we already love, put them together and see if we can make them any better. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So let me paint a picture for you. You're sucking on a chili dog outside the Tasty Freeze with your girl Diane and you catch a whiff of something in the air. You're like, what is that? Is that garlicky, buttery goodness from the Italian joint next door? It's the garlic bread. What if we made a chili dog out of garlic bread? Let's do it. The first component that we're gonna work on is the chili itself, just a classic beef chili. And we're gonna be cooking it today inside the Yoder Smokers YS 640S pellet grill inside the wood-fired oven. Right now it's running at 500 degrees with hickory pellets. We've got a 12 inch cast iron skillet that's been preheating in here for about 10 minutes, so it should be smoking hot. The first thing I wanna do is brown off some of our beef. Uh, this is a brisket blend from Creekstone Farms. It's about 80-20. And before I get any of the onions or peppers in here, I just want to get a little bit of browning going on. Uh, so we have some texture on this before we add those veggies that'll kind of draw moisture out and soften everything up. All right, getting a little texture on there. Let's go ahead and throw in the half cup each now of yellow onion and poblano. I've diced all of this down pretty fine because I kind of want it to all melt together into one like homogenous topping for the chili dog. We're also going to add about a tablespoon of our Cattleman's Grill Roadhouse steak and beef rub. Great chili flavors in here. And we kind of continue as this cooks down, kind of continue switching between the spoon and the masher. The masher is going to come in handy here uh, to help one break down the beef into nice little small pieces so this almost comes out like a sauce rather than something like a chunky chili. And same with the beans. We mash those beans up and all the starches come out and thicken it up. So let's throw this in for, oh, five or so minutes until those onions get softened. Those onions are softening up now. I could have done this, I guess, with the uh, roadhouse, but now we're gonna throw in a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Also going to add a teaspoon and a half of minced garlic. Just kind of work this around. Give it about 30 to 60 seconds to cook some of the raw out of that garlic. Now for the tomatoes, I've got some San Marzano tomatoes that are whole and they're in juices. But since I want this to be nice and smooth, I'm just going to break it down with the immersion blender real quick. All right, so now that'll help smooth everything out. Again, we're not going for big chunks in this chili today, more of a smoother sauce. Next thing we're gonna add here is our beans. We've got the tri-blend beans today, a few different types in there. And I wanna go ahead and get those mashed up. This is just a half can of beans. We're doing a smaller batch of chili. Of course, you could double or triple or quadruple this if you wanna throw some chili in the freezer afterward. So by mashing those beans, all those starches from the beans can come out and start to thicken the liquid that we're getting ready to add next. Now we'll pour in our pureed San Marzanos. Three quarter cup, then a half cup of beef broth. And then for a little bit more smoky chili flavor, Hoff Smoking Ghost hot sauce, as much or as little as you like, but this has great kind of like chipotle smoky flavor to it. So I think at this point, we'll just leave this right here. We'll close up the lid and go start working on our garlic bread. We're starting off with a quarter cup of softened butter. I'm gonna add to that a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Start to thin it out a little bit. Then we've got our white mojo pizza seasoning. I'm gonna do a teaspoon and a half of that. So this has got big time Parmesan and Italian flavors to it. And then finally, we're gonna add some fresh garlic grated on the microplane. Only need about a half teaspoon, so one clove should cover it. And then we're just gonna give this a little max and mash and mix until we got something smooth. It already smells incredible. That's looking good. So in that quick amount of time, the chili's thickened up really nicely. It's got kind of that like thick, saucy 
texture to it, which is exactly what I'm going for. Let's get a quick taste, check the flavors. Oh, that's nice. Mm, got a great bit of smoky heat to it from that smoking ghost. Doesn't need salt, flavors are on point. We can move on from that one. Now back to garlic bread. We've got these really beautiful brioche hot dog buns that are split on top. That's not super important because we're actually going to be doing a little knife work to the top of these as well. But we're gonna load these up into our cast iron bakeware here. And essentially what I'm gonna do is on each and every one of these, I'm gonna cut a little uh, rectangle out that's going to hold our chili and our dog and our cheese. But I'm not gonna pluck it out of there. I'm actually gonna push it all the way down. It'll just make a little indention. And now we've got kind of like a, what will be a garlic bread bowl, essentially. So next step, we're gonna take our garlic butter and brush them all over these buns inside and on top. We can use up all of this garlic butter, but first pass will go a little bit light to make sure we have enough to cover everything. And then we'll go back and uh, add a little extra where we can. Back at the grill now, we've turned it down to 400 and we're gonna slide these into the oven for a par bake, just to get a little structure to them so they don't just fall apart when we cover them in uh, chili dogs and cheese and all that good stuff. So it's about four or five minutes and we'll then give it a spin. All right, getting a little initial toastiness, a little more so in the back than the front, so that's why we're spinning this to get it nice and even. It smells incredible. We're about eight minutes in now, four on each side, and these are looking great. Just a little bit of crisp to them. We don't want to take them too far though because we got to bake them one more time with all the filling in there. So let's go assemble these. Now I'm going to do one of these for you and then I'll go through and kind of do all the other ones, but let's start by putting down a layer of mozzarella, about a half ounce if you were measuring. Then we're gonna do a couple tablespoons of chili. Then you've got your dog. This is just your regular old all beef hot dog. Nestle that in there. A couple more tablespoons of chili on top. And then we'll top it all off with some cheddar cheese. Boom, that's one. I'll go through and fill out the rest. Back into the wood fired oven, still at 400 degrees. We're gonna give this eight minutes, then a spin and check. Ooh, getting melty. Need a little bit more color on the top though. Let's put it back in for eight more. It's about 15, 16 minutes total, and I'd say these are looking done. Nicely browned on top, everything's all melted. Let's go get a taste. Taking this one out because it looks the most delicious to me. I guess they're both coming out. Look at that. Great crunch on the end, but still nice and soft. Super tender brioche. Holding up, but getting a little crunchy. I like it. Just gonna top it off with a little fresh onion on there, some pickled jalapeno, and we are good to go. Oh my gosh. There's so much going on in here. It's kind of strange because you get the chili with the garlic bread flavors and it feels Italian, almost like a ragu, like a red sauce. But the flavor is a little off. There, there's some cumin in there. This doesn't really scream Italian. And then you've got hot dog. And of course, all that cheesy goodness. Dude, they're two, two very different things that surprisingly work really well together. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.